on a cloudy day in Chicago, Illinois. We welcome you to Soldier Field for today's matchup between the 2-1 and one Oakland Raiders and the 0-3 Chicago Bears. Greg Gumbel along with Trent Green, Jamie Erdahl with us down on the sidelines. I want to remind you, this game coming your way in Spanish, we're available using the SAP button on your television. The Oakland Raiders have won the coin toss, and they will defer, which means the Bears get their hands on the football first, and that means Jay Cutler back in action. And the Bears much need Jay Cutler's return because offensively a week ago, only seven first downs, 48 yards of net passing. Mark Mariani will not run it out of the end zone. And so the Bears will take it at their own 20-yard line. Jay Cutler injured his hamstring week two, missed last week's loss at Seattle. Says he's good to go today. Hamstrings can be tricky, Trent, but but he looked good at practice on Friday. He moved around very well in practice. We saw him out here in pregame warm-ups as they were testing the hamstring before, uh, before they went in and made the final decision of whether or not he would be inactive. He looked quick on his feet and was definitely firing the ball down the field. One of the stronger throwing arms in the National Football League belongs to Jay Cutler. Get it! On first down. 180! Play From the 20, and Matt Forte starts it for a couple across the 20 to about the 23-yard line. Watch the left tackle spot today. Second-year man Charles Leno Jr. starts for veteran. German Bushrod, who is out with a concussion, and the workhorse of the Chicago offense, you just saw Matt Forte, the Bears' second leading rusher all time, and he is a horse, Trent. He's a workload for him, that's for sure, Greg. Second and seven. Cutler from the shotgun, pulls it down, starts to run, and got rid of it, and he hits his man across the 35, across the 40, and across the 45 is tight end Martellus Bennett. You've been saying this could be a big day for Martellus Bennett. Well, and that's an area where the Raiders have had problems is covering the opposing team's tight end, and you're, you're really going to have problems if you can't apply more pressure to Jay Cutler and give him that amount of time. You see Bennett matched up with Lofton in the middle of the field, and because of that ability for, for Cutler to step up into the pocket, that's what gives Bennett the, the ability to escape and, and give Cutler the oh, lane to make that throw. 24-yard pickup and a first down. And a Wildcat offense being shown here by the Chicago Bears. Matt Forte will keep it and around the right side and across midfield and to the 45 of the Oakland Raiders where Charles Woodson makes the stop. Let's check the Raiders defense. They need to pick it up there. They're ranked number 32 in the league. They have the bright young star Khalil Mack at defensive end. Newly signed Alden Smith starts at outside linebacker for injured Ray Ray Armstrong with Lofton and Malcolm Smith. And the secondary has the classy veteran and future Hall of Fame safety Charles Woodson now in his 18th year out of Michigan. And we have an injury on the field, and that is the Bears center, Will Montgomery, number 64, the 10-year veteran from Virginia Tech. Let's see if we can see what happened, Trent. You see him here on the left right here, there's 64. He gets, someone falls into the back of his left leg, looks like his own man. And Leno, Leno Jr. coming in from the left side, you see Leno Jr. 72 there, goes to make the chop and misses the defender and actually chops the back of his own man's leg. As Montgomery, you see him. It's almost always the hits that you don't see coming, isn't it? And, th and that's really the, for an offensive lineman, whether it's a running back running into their back or, or in this case, another lineman falling into the back of their legs, that's the, that's the one thing that they really can't have any control of is uh, someone falling into the back or sides of their legs. You never see it coming. Montgomery helped to his feet, certainly favoring the left ankle here. The key inactives today for the Bears, Alshon Jeffrey, the fine wide receiver, will miss the game because of the hamstring. Bushrod we mentioned. Patrick O'Donnell, the punter, is out with a right knee injury. And Jay Ratliff, coming off a three-game suspension, still not ready to play with a sore ankle. The Bears signed a punter yesterday, Spencer Lanning, to replace O'Donnell. Montgomery, you can tell, walking pretty gingerly. We'll, uh, we'll keep updated on that for you. The Bears, meanwhile, with second and two. Matt Slauson has moved to the center position. 
to replace Montgomery. Second and two. Forte will get it. When you, anytime you have the changes on the offensive line, like you talked already without Bushrod up front, and now you move Slauson from left guard over to center, and you got Patrick Omame coming in at left guard, there's not going to be that continuity that you would normally have with your usual offensive line. So now it's third and two. Mario Edwards, the rookie defensive end out of Florida State, making that last stop. And Forte in the backfield with Cutler. And Cutler seems to be a little confused as to uh, the clock. Uh, let's see. Well, the clock, the clock is still at 25. Well, then it wasn't moving at all when Cutler turned around. Play to clock never started, so it will be in 25 seconds. So Cutler threw his arms up to triple it because the, the play clock was still stuck at 40. So he was moving now. He had no idea how much time he had. And oh, it's this. <laughs> Cutler looking. It's all kinds of time. Still looking, going down field, and he's got his man inside the 20, inside the 15, out of bounds at about the 10 is Marquise Wilson. Those of you who are watching the New York Jets Miami game from London, welcome to Soldier Field in Chicago. 35 yard completion from Jay Cutler to Marquise Wilson has just put the Bears in business at the 10 yard line. First and goal. This is Matt Forte, and Forte for about three to the seven. Oakland won the toss, deferred, and the Bears have had possession since the opening kick. And going back to one play ago, here's the long completion to Marquise Wilson. You see the amount of time that Cutler has sliding around in the pocket. He's not looking to take off and run, still dealing with that hamstring injury. DJ Hayden in coverage. That's a long time to expect to be in coverage man to man. Second and goal for the Bears. Offense has been lacking. They have no touchdowns over their last six quarters play. Cutler. Still dancing and throws it away. No, he didn't throw it away. Off the fingertips of Josh Bellamy. Boy, Bellamy got up high. It did look like a throw away from this standpoint, and, and Jay Cutler took a heck of a shot from Malcolm Smith as he was sliding in the pocket. Once again, dealing with that hamstring that he was close to being inactive today, but ultimately came back, and you see the shot he takes from Smith as he leaves, and Bellamy climbs the ladder and almost able to bring it in. There's the hit put on him by Malcolm Smith. Third and goal. Good pass to the far side. That is complete. And a Royal touchdown. Trent, you and I have been talking all weekend about what nice medicine it would be for the Bears offense to get Jake Cutler back. Well, and, and it's because of his quick release and his understanding of the offense. You watch the two outside receivers, Bennett and Wilson, clear things out, and they're just running Royal to the flat. It's, it, the, the other two, Bennett and Wilson, they're not even there to run a route. You can see they just go upfield, and they're trying to delay long enough to start their block so they don't get called for an offensive pass interference because they know that ball is going to be quickly on Royal. That's exactly what Cutler does, a much-needed boost, as you said. They needed Cutler to get back and add a little uh, vertical threat in this, in this offensive attack. New Cutler holding for Robbie Gold, and it was blocked at the line of scrimmage. Well, and that's very smart of Robbie Gold to jump on that ball. As we understand now, the defense can pick that up and return it for two points. So good awareness by Robbie Gold to jump on it. Here once again is the touchdown to Royal, getting in the end zone for Cutler. New rules in play for the missed point after as they begin to mount up here in 2015. Here's the block. Now you see Danico Autry, 96 on the left of your screen, but watch the trajectory of this ball. Look where the goalpost is and look where that ball is tipped. 
I think even if it's not blocked, it's going to be wide left. But it was smart on Gold's part to jump on that football. As we said before break, the Raiders could have returned that for two points. Gold's first kick, missed kick this year. This is short. He comes down and bounces out of bounds inside the 10 yard line, and the penalty flag flies. Kick off out of bounds, kicking team. Ball replaced in the 30 yard line. Correction, 40 yard line. First down. Jeff Triplett, our referee today. And we'll take a timeout. Six nothing in favor of the Bears. Derek Carr in the Oakland offense. Take to the field right after this. Nice pictures of what happened yesterday outside of Soldier Field, but Ditka Dash taking place. The 5K race that raises funds for Special Olympics Chicago and features thousands of Mike. Ditka lookalikes, which is just what the world needs. <laughs> just what the world needs. It, it's funny. It's funny that there's a, a Ditka dash here in town, right? Greg Gumbel, Trent Green, Jamie Erdahl at Soldier Field in Chicago on a day that so far is not as bad as uh, weather forecasts predicted earlier this week. Yeah, the weather was nice. I was down on the field before the game. Down. It's a little bit of wind, but not too bad. What's up? Derek Carr gives to Latavius Murray, and Murray. Not going far at all. Derek Carr off to a fine start in his second NFL season. 314 yards and two touchdowns last week at Cleveland. And completing 63% of his throws. And, you know, Jake Cutler's got a great arm. Derek Carr's isn't bad either. Yeah, and he looks a lot more comfortable in year number two. As you see, the touchdown interception ratio at 5-1. to one. He's in better control as well. Nothing on first down, second and ten. Uh, with time down the middle off the hands of tight end Clive Walford the rookie out of Miami Oakland's offensive line has Jamarcus Webb number 76 at right guard he was the Bears seventh round draft pick back in 2010 and a big offensive weapon came in the draft in first round pick Amari Cooper Trent He's everything the Raiders hoped he would be in them zone. He's leading the National Football League for rookies receiving yards, rookies receptions, and his yards after catch is second in the NFL. Third and ten. Carr throwing this side. Came up short, and it was a good thing because Tracy Porter was there waiting. Well, that's going to be the clue or the key for the Bears defense is to not allow Derek Carr to get comfortable in the pocket. You'll see Cooper here. Just with a comeback on the outside, excellent coverage by Porter anticipating that ball and ready for the undercut and car through the short. Mark Mariani, deep for the kick. He's going to let it go and it bounces inside the 10 and then he downed at about the five yard line. Andre Holmes down the ball inside. Oh, right at a five-yard line, and that's where the Bears will get started. The Bears from their own six-yard line with a six-nothing lead. And they'll start it with the give to Forte, and Forte across the 10 out to the 14 where Charles Woodson makes the stop. Let's go down to Jamie Erdahl. Jamie. Uh, Greg, speak of the devil. Priority number one for Raiders head coach Jack Del Rio when he got to Oakland was change the culture of this team. And the guy he needed to do that most would be the return of 18-year NFL vet Charles Woodson. Now, Woodson knew once his body was ready to go for another year in the NFL, he started to notice the changes the Raiders were making, most specifically Del Rio's new staff. And you can see he's the quintessential veteran that you would want on this team to make a change. He is indeed. Thank you, Jamie, on second and two. Forte, first down, and then some across the 20 to about the 23-yard line. And Matt Forte continues to roll up the yardage, now over 8,000 in his career. That's the second most in team history behind the one and only Walter Payton. Well, in the eight-year back out of Tulane, still has a lot of uh, bounce in that cut. You see how, how quickly the last two plays, his ability and his vision to cut and then accelerate once he finds that lane. Uh, that's why he's, uh, as you said, only trailing Walter Payton. Cutler, play fake, running for his life, got rid of it. Proved incomplete. 
Khalil Mack putting the pressure on Cutler in the, in the backfield. We'll talk about that. Matt Forte, he's second in just about every important offensive category there is behind the great Walter Payton. Well, and having a chance to talk to him about it, he said, you know, that'll be something special to look back on once I retire, once I'm done playing, because you don't want to get caught up in the moment. You don't want to start patting yourself on the back too soon. That was, uh, that was what he said, and you know, it was nice getting a chance to talk to him and, and see the amount of work and how much he cares about it. He can, he can back that. <laughs> he can. He just chose, he chose not to. Butler got it knocked down. Number 99, Alden Smith. Well, and that's one of those ones you'll see Alden Smith coming off the edge here. And he's the one that gets a hand on it. But that's the one as a quarterback. Sometimes you want to have the string on the ball because you try and throw the screen pass, but you see the defensive player peel off on it. And you don't want to take a chance of, of, of the interception. So now Cutler looking at third and ten. Hey, Lafayette! Lafayette! Long horn! Long horn! He needs the 34-yard line for a first down. Steps up. Under pressure. Got it to Roy. Roy going across the field. Looking for the first down and has it. 40-yard line. And two out to the 45 and a first down for Chicago. Charles Woodson pushing him out. So Royal's coming from left to right, but I want you to understand the, the, the structure of this defense. See, Royal's lined up in the slot. He does an out and then undercuts knee. He's the outlet, basically, but the structure of the Raiders' defense was a cover two, and, and to isolate Martellus Bennett on the top all by yourself and have a safety over the top. That just tells you the, some of the concern and some of the respect that the Raiders have defensively for Bennett, which allows those one-on-ones underneath with Eddie Roy. See how the fortunes of the Bears have already changed from a week ago. This is Forte. And Forte wrapped up by Justin Tuck, the 11th-year veteran out of Notre Dame. time we mentioned Charles Woodson I think Jack Del Rio's reaction yesterday can you imagine having played as long as Woodson has played he just started laughing <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, not, especially defensive guys that's a, that's a long time to play coming Woodson. up and making a number of hits Woodson in his 18th year but quick pass near side this is Bennett and that play is going to go anywhere the ball is loose and covered by Carrie Lee tight end I think the ball comes out before he hits the ground the only thing you could say is whether or not the officials whistled that forward progress had been stopped but based on the fact where they're marking the ball that's not the case holding offense number 82 that penalty is declined third down let's go down to Jamie we saw center Will Montgomery get carted off with a left ankle injury. He is out for the game for the Chicago Bears. All right, Jamie, thank you. So Matt Slauson, there you see him in the center of your screen, number 68, normally the left guard. He will be presumed in the center for the rest of the day. Third and 19. Excellent, excellent. For Cutler. Pulls it down. Throwing it away on the far sideline. So that was Cutler understanding he had nothing and threw it away, and the punting unit will come on. No, that's a smart decision. They're, they're blanketing the guys underneath, really almost a, a two man type of coverage, not allowing anybody to get that second level. With that down in distance, smart de defensive call by the Raiders, trying to apply that pressure with Ford with Cutler's mobility, force him to throw it away. Here's the new Bears punter, Spencer Lanning. And T.J. Carey all the way back to his own 12-yard line. And he comes back across the 15, and that is where he will stop. 51-yard punt.
Welcome back to Soldier Field in Chicago. 6-0 Bears. Greg Gumbel along with Trent Green all week long. The concern in Chicago has been about this Bears team and whether or not it can right itself. They're not as bad as an 0-3 record might indicate. Well, you just look at the opponents they've played, and I think that was the important part when the Raiders, we t had a chance to talk to them about, look at the schedule that the Bears have had. Look at the number of injuries they've had. The fact that Jay Cutler didn't play in one and a half of those games. Now he's back. Obviously, the Bears are dealing with some injuries along the offensive line, so it's a matter of giving Jay Cutler time to push the ball down the field. A holding call on that punt has the ball Down. for the Raiders at their the own six-yard line. Latavius Murray. No game. Hit by linebacker Pernell McPhee. Chicago's defense up front. Jeremiah Ratliff was due back today after a three-game suspension to start the season. A sore ankle has rookie Eddie Goldman starting in his place. McPhee at linebacker, an outstanding game in the loss at Seattle. Six solo tackles, two of them for a loss, and two of Chicago's four sacks. And the anchor of the secondary, the 11th year veteran safety, Antrell Roll. On second and ten, give it to Murray again. And Murray this time finds room to run and continues plowing out to about the 12 yard line. On first down, the Bears decided to commit a, a, a bunch of defenders down into that defensive box and not allow the run to happen. Second down, anticipating that they were going to throw the football, they drop back into more of a cover two, cover eight shell where you're getting safeties deep, corners playing a relaxed coverage. The Raiders take advantage of that and push the pile right up the middle to make this third and manageable. Third and three. Oakland not yet able to generate much offense at all. This pass is complete to the near side of the field. Michael Crabtree out to close to the 25-yard line and a first down. Well, and McManus is in position on this. Crabtree just running a corner route. Carr trying to anticipate and throw the ball early. McManus undercuts it and just misses the ball, and Crabtree is able to bring it in on the back shoulder, now giving the Raiders some space away from their, their own goal line. Michael Crabtree on one side of the field, Amari Cooper on the other. Derek Carr has some targets. From their own 24, Carr with time, throws, and that's incomplete. Intended for Cooper. Time for us to go green, Trent. Well, and speaking of Cooper, this is a combination that the Raiders are hoping to have long-term success. When you have a young quarterback, a young receiver, the timing is so important. As you see Carr about to get hit, he throws this ball early before Cooper even gets out of his cut. So being on the same page at an early age, early in the season, is very vital. And as you see, once making the catch, Cooper has the speed to take it the distance. Ready? On second and ten. Passes to Michael Rivera, the tight end. First time he's been targeted today, and Antrell Roll rides him out of bounds. Well, we talked about the, the Bears and their use of the tight end with Martellus Bennett, but it's important for this offensive attack for the Raiders to utilize the tight end as well. We, we mentioned Crabtree, obviously just talked about Cooper. Latavius Murray's carrying the football very well in the backfield. The, the way their running game is working, you have to have a back, or you have to have a tight end like Rivera who can catch the ball and, and keep defenses honest, especially in the middle of the field. So a third and six now facing Carr in the Oakland offense. Yeah, yeah. Carr, this side of the field. Off the hands of the rookie, Amari Cooper. Carr had Cooper isolated one-on-one -on -one with Tracy Porter. Gives him a stick and goes to the outside. Tracy Porter tries undercutting it. Doesn't get a hand on it, but just gets in the vision of Cooper, and that's what causes that drop. But that's a ball you'd like to see Amari Cooper come up with. Mark Mariani back inside his 25-yard line. Punt from Marquette King. Mariani from the 20. Penalty marker flies. He's going to try to turn the corner, and he's not going to make it. Back to about the two-yard line. 52-yard punt and a two-yard return, and we'll check the flag. 
seems anymore, Greg, on all special teams, whether you're talking kickoffs or punt, there's, there's going to be a flag virtually every time. I think officials should just start the play with the flag in their hand. <laughs> Here in return, holding, return team. Ten-yard penalty, still first down, timeout. Apparently there is no one particularly to be singled out for this penalty. the Bears from their own 12-yard line and Jack Wiz Rogers starts in the backfield in this series. Run it up! Rogers with the handoff and he's going nowhere. Get hard right up the, the, the middle by Stacy McGee. We get our first NFL Today update of the day. Back to New York. James Brown, Bart Scott. Greg, identical Cincinnati drives for scores. That's right, JB. Seven plays, 80 yards, capped off by Giovanni Bernard. 13-yard run. Cincinnati up 14-3. Back to Greg Gumbel, Trent Green, and Jamie Erdahl. All right, guys, thank you. No gain on the play as you see the Bengals. They're feeling good about Cincinnati themselves. They're staying they? hot, aren't they? Making that division, starting to run away with it. Almost got away from Cutler, and he throws, and he completes it. Close to the 20-yard line to his tight end, Martellus Bennett. Not the way you draw it up. <laughs> not the uh, not the smoothest of transitions. Cutler staying with it as you see this ball come in. They have to understand, different center, new center he hasn't worked with. Clawson moving over from guard to center, and Cutler sticking with it. A little scary when you're down there with your heels on your own end zone. It was interesting to see the snap after a snap like that and see this one comes out. 34. Perfect. That's complete. Across the 25 and out of bounds at the 26-yard line is Martellus Bennett. We touched earlier about the Raiders and their lack of success against opposing tight ends, and Bennett is, Bennett is sticking with that same same mold right now. Four catches for 30 yards already. And so far, Jake Cutler looking very good. Sliding around very well. Looks good. Looks mobile. Looks quick. I don't think they want him taking off and running to test it in, uh, in a full full sprint, but uh, he's definitely able to move around the way they wanted to within the confines of the pocket. New set of downs to give us to Rodgers, and Rodgers straight ahead to about the 29-yard line. Khalil Mack making the stop, and, you know, you touched on it earlier that tight ends have done some damage against this Raider defense this and season. You, and you can see the, the numbers that have been put up against them, and, and right now Bennett is, is working on that same pace, probably even ahead of the pace of those other three guys, so that's an area of concern for the Raiders, and they knew it coming in, especially facing a guy like that. Bennett four catches for 30 yards today. Cutler to throw again. Far side of the field, tipped, and it falls incomplete. Looked like Khalil Mack might have gotten a hand on that one. What did you know, Jack Del Rio said? Khalil Mack doesn't have the stats that are that 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 he deserves, but everybody knows him. Everybody notices him too. Well, and you're very aware of him, especially in, in passing situations. That's why he was drafted in the first round out of Buffalo. That's why they're so high on him in Oakland. His ability to get after the quarterback, and you can tell now that's the second ball that's been tipped to Jay Cutler. So they've been told, you know, Jay kind of throws with the lower trajectory of his elbow. So get, get your hands up and try and knock it down. Third and seven. And Cutler this time can't dance out of trouble. Justin Tuck. Now with 66 and a half career sacks. Well, and Tuck is going to be coming. Let's see, we're 91. You can see him coming in right here. You're talking about pressure. You got Mack and Alden Smith coming off the edges. Now, all of a sudden, you move Justin Tuck on the inside, and three fierce pass rushers coming uh, coming up the middle after after Cutler. T.J. Carey back inside his own 30-yard line, and this is Spencer Lanning again. They are letting the clock wind down and will let the first quarter expire before the snap. The first quarter. 
So they'll change ends, and then they'll kick it away. 6-0 Bears. This is the NFL on CBS. So first quarter numbers as we get set to start the second period. Look at the time of possession down there. 11-14 for the Bears. 3-46 for the Oakland Raiders. And six first downs to one tells you that the Bears have been able to move the football. Well, if you want to help your defense out, look at the other team. The nine plays, nine offensive snaps for the Raiders in that first quarter. This is T.J. Carey. Carey running room on the right side. Out across the 45. And that'll be marked down at about the 47, maybe the 48-yard line. Sam Acho making the tackle. Hey, a reminder, your weekend begins here with Thursday Night Football on CBS and NFL Network. The Indianapolis Colts will take on the Houston Texans here on your home to Super Bowl 50, CBS Sports. Interesting, Andrew Luck inactive today in the game against Jacksonville. Will he be back? on Thursday. Well, and you would think that's that's probably what they're thinking has to do with his, you know, playing a division opponent and uh, on a short week is trying to get him as healthy as possible. Hard on the near side, and this is Cooper. And Cooper across midfield to the Chicago 46, brought down by Sam Acho. Bears leading after one quarter for the first time all season. Well, I'm going back to Cooper just getting that football now. You want to get receivers involved. As a quarterback, you want to get guys involved, especially your playmakers. You want to get them the ball in their hands, and they hadn't had any success getting them the ball up the field. So let's come out on first down, a good drive starter, nice quick throw, get the ball in his hands, and maybe get him into the flow of the game a little bit better. On second and five, Cooper on the other side. Inside the 45 to about the 43 where Shea McClellan makes the stop and Michael Crabtree is in agony on the far side of the field. Let's go to New York. Hey Bart, the trap can still work, huh? Uh, I tell you what, Devontae Freeman, Atlanta has a running game, takes it 23 yards up the gut. His six on the season, which leads to NFL, Atlanta up 14-0. That to go along with an exceptional passing game. Greg Gumbel, Trent Green. All right, guys, thank you. And Michael Crabtree in an awful lot of discomfort on the far side of the field after that last play. When we touched on how important he's been this season. See if we can see where he gets caught up. Number 15, Michael Crabtree trying to walk it off on the sideline. Let's go back and see what happened. Well, here's Crabtree right here. You can watch the back of his legs, but watch Jarvis Jenkins here as he comes to make the tackle, falls into the back of Crabtree's legs. Very similar. We saw Will Montgomery for the Bears, the center for the Bears, get rolled up on by his own offensive lineman. It's very similar here with Crab Crabtree trying to make a block downfield. On the quick throw, having defenders fall into the back of your leg. Derek Carr throwing complete. Number 86 is Lee Smith, the tight end, and he is to the 40-yard line of the Bears, and that's enough for a first down. Crabtree has been replaced on the field by number 10, Seth Roberts, a first-year wide receiver out of West Alabama, who has himself a pair of touchdown catches. Well, and he provides some speed on the outside as well. It's important for the Raiders to try and get in some sort of rhythm. We talked about the only nine plays in that first quarter, now picking up a first down and getting into Bears territory. Carr, Murray. And Murray going nowhere. Wrapped up by safety Adrian Amos. Tonight on CBS, Taylor Leone. Returns with special guest star Morgan Freeman on the powerful season premiere of the hit drama Madam Secretary tonight after 60 minutes only CBS You see this Bears football team and they don't really feel or look like an 0-3 football team and, and when talking to the Raiders in their preparation for this to say hey look at, look at the opponents They've had look at the schedule. They've had we understand Down. you know not an 0 3 type of football team. Even though that's what their record says, they expected a much bigger battle today. This is Murray straight ahead. Inside the 40 to about the 37. 
pulling on the reverse side of that, Greg. The same thing goes for the Bears. We went to their, their practice facility on Friday, got a chance to see them and speak with the players, and they really didn't carry themselves like an 0-3 team. They they were frustrated. Obviously, they're frustrated being 0-3, uh, but they felt they were a better better team than that and, and could perform better. So uh, they just anticipated and were anxious about getting out here today and, and facing the Raiders. John Fox, pretty confident they would come around. He said, I like the guys the way they're playing. They're playing hard. Third and eight. Carr, quick pass. Murray out of the backfield, inside the 30 and out of bounds, short of the 25-yard line. That's another first down for the Raiders. Wait, Latavius Murray has great hands, doesn't he? Yeah, Latavius Murray coming out of the backfield here, and you see him peel with Houston trying to get in coverage. That's a disguise that you try and do defensively when you're trying to bring bodies and cause confusion with the pass protection. But Latavius Murray, as he's running one direction, catching a low pass, so his tremendous hands out of the backfield. And, and uh, good job by Carr finding that leverage and finding that matchup. Lamar Houston making that play. Spent his first four years in the NFL with the Oakland Raiders. Carr with time. Going to go deep toward the end zone. Cooper. It is ruled incomplete. I don't think it looked like he, it looked like he had one, but not two. Let's see, he gets... Just depends on if that, that trail leg was still on the ground right there when he caught it. So, the right leg is still on the ground. You can see the toe on the ground here, and he has the ball in his hands. Let's see where the second one comes down. It looks like you can see some green under in front of his toes. It'll be interesting to see if they challenge this. They are throwing the flag. The yep. Raiders are challenging. On the far side of the field, Jack Del Rio says he wants a look. Since it was not ruled a touchdown, it's not an automatic replay. That's something that Del Rio had to throw the flag if you want to take another look. Oakland is challenging the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass. So we get our first challenge of the day. Does Amari Cooper get the Raiders on the board or not? We'll find out when we come back. So Jeff Triplett has gone under the hood to take a closer look at this, Trent. Well, it's important to, to look at. The second foot comes down. I stopped so we can hear Triplett. They're calling it a touchdown. It is a touchdown. Yep. Oakland is not charged to timeout. Let's go to New York and bring in Mike Carey. Mike. Greg, the close thing about this one is that the receiver had control with his back foot down, and then the second foot came in. Unfortunately, the back judge got underneath this and didn't have a clear look at it. That's why these things sometimes get missed on the field. Yeah, we thought, Mike, that uh, that the question was whether or not that back foot was down when he did gain control of the pass. Yes, and it takes three shots to piece it together for us, and then you can confirm it with those three shots. Actually, I confirmed it with Trent Green because he said it's going to be a touchdown long before <laughs> anybody else did. Janikowski's extra point is good, and the Raiders have a 7-6 lead. 51-yard drive in just over three and a half minutes, and Amari Cooper grabbing his second touchdown pass of the season. You'll see Cooper here in the slot. He's the one that's going to have the corner route, but I want you to keep the eye on the corner. That is what Derek Carr is looking at. He's watching to see if that corner jumps the out route. You see Porter jumps the out route, so Carr lays it to the back corner to get it over the top. Eleven ten to play in the first half. Janikowski. And this one looks returnable by Maria. Up the middle, across the twenty to about the twenty-one, and the flag flies from Jeff Triplett. Holding number eighty-two on the return team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. That penalty is on Kerry Lee. We go down to Jamie. Greg, two notes from the Raiders' sideline safety. T.J. Carey is questionable to return to the game with a chest injury, and we saw wide receiver Michael Crabtree go down with a right ankle injury. He is doing his best to come back into this game. He has the right ankle retaped, but he is also questionable. All right, Jamie, thank you. 
So T.J. Carey has been replaced in the Oakland secondary by number 29, David Emerson. Third-year defensive back from NC State. Yeah. And Cutler starts from his own eight-yard line. Forte. Forte for little or no gain. Danico Autry wrapping him up. Let's take a look at Jake Cutler and how he's been moving today. Sliding around the pocket, you can see with him keeping his eyes upfield, able to backpedal and make an accurate throw upfield. Step up in the pocket, step up in the pocket, slide and avoid. He looks very good considering how concerned they were coming into today's game. On second down, Cutler takes a good look. without one of the better receivers in the game and Alshon Jeffrey who is out today. Cam screen. Cutler the throw. Under pressure. Throws across the 20 yard line that is complete to Zach Miller as tight end. And we have a penalty marker down in the backfield. Holding offense. Still second down. Cutler is not real happy about it. He, whether he's not happy about the shot that he takes after the throw or or the holding call, but and then look at Michael Crabtree who is walking off the field. <laughs> Looks like Leonard Jr. gets up around the neck of. Alden Smith. So it's a second and 13 from the five. Forte breaks it to the near side. Back inside and across the 15. Larry Asante, fourth year safety from Nebraska, making the tackle as we duck under nine and a half to play here in the first half. And just the vision that Forte shows, setting, allowing his blocks to get set up here. It looks like he's going to go to the outside. And Woodson gets knocked out of the picture. And he's able to cut back and, and pick that up. But what it really does by that run, that big gain on second down, is it now puts into third and short. Gives you some choices here trying to pick up the first down. Bears go with three tight ends on third and one. Forte, the deep back. Forte get the first down and he does and a lot more across the 25 out to the 27 for a first down for Chicago. Malcolm Smith guesses and he runs out of the hole. Watch how he sees the pulling guard. So he jumps to the outside thinking that's where the counter is going to go. And Matt Forte recognizes that Malcolm Smith jumps out of that spot, cuts it back inside and is able to pick up the first down. Good vision on his part. And that's Larry Asante who is down on the field after the play. Number 42 in the middle of your screen is the one who makes the initial hit. Look at a little junior Pee Wee football yesterday at Blackhawk Park here in Chicago as the Plainfield Prowlers in the white uniforms took on the Windy City Dolphins wearing black. Who'd you have in that game? <laughs> Whoever had the fastest kid. That's, that's that generally who wins those games. Whoever has the fastest kid at that, that age of football generally comes up with the win. Rookie defensive back Keenan Lambert has come on to replace Larry Asante. On first down, lost the football. Yeah. Looks like the Raiders have it. And they do at the Chicago 25-yard line. Dan Williams covered the ball, and once again, you have to suspect that new center in the lineup for the Bears. We'll see a close-up here of Cutler's hands. He never gets the ball. Almost looks like he closes his hands too early, so maybe a little delay in the, in the snap with what he's normally used to with Will Montgomery. Obviously, Montgomery out of the first series of the game. Matt Slauson moving over from guard to center. Not on the same page there, unfortunately, for the Bears after putting something together to get it away from their own end zone, picking up some big first downs, and now giving the Raiders key field position. Cutler hasn't played in a week, and Slauson replaced injured center Will Montgomery. 
and prime opportunity now for Derek Carr in the Oakland offense. First down at the Bears, 25. Yeah, follow. Over the middle, Murray out of the backfield. Pick up of about five to the 20-yard line. The Raiders, things going well for them after an opening week loss. They've won two straight in our game behind Denver in the AFC West. And now Latavius Murray is on the turf. Well, and after catching this ball, he, ma he makes the first defender miss, and then it was just the body weight, the crush of defenders landing on top of him. You see the pursuit here. He makes the first first defender miss, but Ego Ferguson is the one that comes in and when you make that first guy miss, people pursuing from behind and Ferguson drops him on that right shoulder. Don't want to speculate it's the right shoulder. It looks like he's trying to stretch out his ribs a little bit when the trainers were out there as well. That'll knock the wind out of you. The starters walking off the field. And he'll be replaced by Roy Hillouf Jr., 50 year back out of Nebraska. So that play picked up five. It'll be second and five. And we have eight minutes remaining here in the first half. Carr. And the middle on the slant. Cooper. Cooper inside the five. It'll be first and goal. Cooper here beating Porter off the line of scrimmage with the inside move. Recognize he has safety help over the top. Accurate throw, but Carr, the heat coming down on him off the right side, standing in there and firing the ball in there. And he's still in the backfield along with Carr on first and goal. And Carr will get it to him. To five. Goal line. Touchdown. Raiders. We have seen a complete turnaround in this football game from what happened in the first quarter when the Bears dominated play. Dominated play, dominated time of possession. This last series set up because of a turnover. You're going to see tight end releases to the outside. Halu on a swing. Recognizing as man, man to man over there. Carr makes a good decision going to that side of the field. As soon as he sees the defenders drop. As soon as he sees the defenders drop on Smith into the end zone. He knows to go to a swing, and from there it's all about Hulu getting in the end zone. Janikowski's kick is good, and with 7-12 to play in the first half, the Oakland Raiders up their lead to 14-6 here in Chicago. Fired up Derek Carr, the Oakland quarterback on the sideline. Two touchdown passes today. 28 in his career and he has passed Tom Flores for the most by a Raider quarterback through his first two NFL seasons and here he is just four games into year number two well and he's quickly established himself as a leader even though he's only in his second year and, and normally a quarterback is your leader he's quickly established himself that the guys respond to and he's done a great job of getting everybody on the same page even with the changes that have been made you know new coaching staff new offense new personnel uh, he's really taken hold of this team Speaking of Tom Flores, he stopped in and said hello to us prior to the kickoff today. Raider broadcaster is a look at some key injuries today. Crabtree with the ankle. T.J. Carey, the chest, and Latavius Murray walked off shortly. The Raiders say he has a shoulder injury, and the Bears lost Will Montgomery to an ankle injury. Well, and that, and that last one was probably the, the biggest one just because of the fumble that occurred on the quarterback center exchange the last series for the Bears, giving the Raiders that great field position that they ultimately took in and scored the touchdown. Hey. Got it, got it. On first down. Cutler. With time. Running out of time. Throws complete. This is Forte. Forte 
out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. Good job by... Hold that thought, Trent. This week on an all-new Late Show, it's Senator John McCain. And Tuesday, Stephen welcomes former President Bill Clinton. Don't miss it. Only CBS. You were saying... Cutler 8 out of 13 for 103 and a touchdown. This is Forte. And not much happening there. So it'll be second and it looks like 10. You know, we referenced Matt Forte earlier when we talked to him on Friday. He's a really humble guy for someone who has accomplished so much here in Chicago. Well, I thought it was really refreshing just the conversations we had about he and his dad and how his dad evaluates everything and watches tape and just, you know, it just, uh, it was, he said early in his career his, his dad gave a lot of coaching points and now, now he kind of figures he knows what he's doing. Cutler throwing far side. This is Eddie Royal. Eddie Royal. Maybe a yard or two and not much more. Forte, an accomplished football player. You know, he, he's a weapon you can use in the running game. Obviously, yards from scrimmage. He's fifth in the NFL this year because of the number of catches he gets out of the backfield. A lot of bang up on the offensive line. So that 4.7 yards per rush may be, may be put in jeopardy today just because that whole left side of the offensive line has really been changed around with the injury to Montgomery. Yeah. With Leno Jr. going in at left tackle to start this game, it's uh, a little bit of a shakeup. And Eddie Royal just came off the field shaking up. 37. Okay. Running room. Midfield. Finally pushed out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. I like that, Greg. Just when we had talked about him catching the ball out of the backfield, they, they hit to him on a check down, and here's Forte coming out of the backfield. Cutler wants to look upfield. Gets to his check down very quickly. Once he see, once as a quarterback, as you see the defenders drop deep, and you have a back like Forte that you can get the ball in his hands quickly, Watch the vision there as he sets up Asante on that cut. 38-yard pickup. Fourth play of the day that the Bears have gained 20 or more yards on a play. This is Forte on the ground. Breaks it outside. Stiff arm. And a penalty marker is thrown. Nico Thorpe. Let's see. Jack Del Rio says this should go the other way. So Nico Thorpe coming up on the outside, trying to get the tackle. Personal foul, face mask, number 31, the defense. Half the distance, the goal, automatic first down. The radar is uh, the, the Raiders are not at all happy about yeah. this one. Well, Jack Del Rio is looking for an offensive face mask. As you see Forte get his right hand up into the, the mask of Thorpe. But you do see Thorpe get that other arm up there and, and tug on the face mask initially and let go. So that's what that's what Jack Del Rio was all the way out towards the numbers, yelling at the officials looking for uh, looking for offensive face mask. From the nine yard line, Jeremy Langford is in the Chicago backfield. Langford gets the handoff. And Langford still on his feet. Moves it to about the five. Langford, the fourth round draft pick for the Bears out of Michigan State. Now you start getting worried about where the isolation is going to be down in here. The Raiders are going to try and stop the inside run. Where do you have the matchup on the outside that you feel best about? Langford still in the backfield. On second and goal, Cutler to throw. The end zone wide open. Touchdown, Martellus Bennett. Well, 
Well, that's not the guy you leave open. Miscommunication between linebackers and outside. Bennett's going to be going on the corner route here. You'll see on the outside, David Amerson comes inside with the outside tight end, and nobody follows Bennett on the corner route. It was just a combination route, and you try and cause confusion, and clearly the Raiders were confused. Now, this is interesting. The Bears are going for one instead of two. It's a little early to chase the points, isn't it? It's a little early to chase, but you have to remember you have a new holder. You missed the last one, or it would have missed had it not been blocked. Spencer Lanning is the putter who is the holder here. Gets it down, and Robbie Gould gets the kick away, and it's good. So three and a half to play in a game in which the Bears have just dominated time of possession and total yardage. And they trail by a single point, 14-13. Let's go back to the TD. Right, for a quarterback, does it, does it get much easier? Well, you have this? Zach Miller coming in. He's going to sit down, and then you got a corner route here. And what happens is the two defenders, this including one and then, and then one that's off the screen here, they come in and they, they squeeze Zach Miller. They, they end up they end up double teaming. And as Bennett comes, you can see right here, they're double teamed. And then nobody covers Bennett as he as he goes to the corner. So that's more of a communication issue than a, than a design issue. And for Cutler, that's just an easy toss. So Cutler with the touchdown pass. There's one more look. You see him squeeze on the outside. Amerson comes in and, and squeezes it. Coming into this game, the Bears had scored four touchdowns. That was tied for the fewest in the lead. They have two so far today. Well, and even though they're they're trailing by a point here, time of possession is nearly 10 minutes in favor of the Bears. Take away that turnover they had, and, and that's really ultimately led to, uh, to the Raiders right now having their 14 points. The Raiders have Marcel Reese deep to receive this one, and this one's short. It'll come down inside the 20 for Roy Hallou Jr. And he'll bring it back to about the 29-yard line. Week 4 continues later today on Fox and then tonight with Sunday Night Football on NBC. Tune in tomorrow for Monday Night Football on ESPN. Just when you get a feel for one team in this game, the flow sort of changes, doesn't it, Trent? Yeah, and, and, and the turnover was the key for the Raiders getting that. Obviously getting the big touchdown catch from Amari Cooper early on, but then the turnover gave them that second one, and then the Bears putting together a heck of a heck of a series there going down the field. Most of that picked up by Forte, catching the ball out of the backfield. Latavius Murray is back for the Raiders. Pop going to Murray on the near side, intercepted! Right off of his chest, picked off by Pernell McPhee! Well, that's one as a quarterback, you just have to let go mentally because you couldn't have thrown the ball any better. Hit Murray right in the chest. We were talking earlier about what a great pair of hands Murray has. This one just bounced off of him. Well, this is the problem. He doesn't trust his hands. He tries catching it with his shoulder pads and his body. Instead of sticking out your hands and catching it with your hands, you let that ball get to your body, bad things can happen. And you see here, he tries to cradle it, just comes in, hits that shoulder pad, and pops up in the air. It's an easy interception for the Bears. Pernell McPhee with the ball. And Eddie Royal is back onto the field for the Bears now. He left the game a few minutes ago, had his ankle checked, and he is back. And Matt Forte in the backfield with cut. Forte. For a little bit. To about the 12. Dan Williams, Stacy McGee making the stop. Clock continues to move. We come up on three minutes to play in the first half. The Bears have been very methodical about the way they call the plays and the way their tempo. We know I already mentioned about the lopsided time of possession. 
But they tend to be winding down this 40-second clock, using up as much time as they can, not just because we're near the end of the half. They've been doing it the entire game as Cutler's been keeping his eye on the play clock. On second and seven, Cutler looking at the near side of the field, inside the 10, inside the 5 is Marquise Wilson. He is a big target at 6'4", 200 pounds. And then they'll, they'll let this point all the way down to the two-minute warning, but just a, a regular hitch. You get man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. You know it's going to be a timing route. You're throwing it to the back shoulder because you know the, where he's going to come out of his route. The timing was there in place for the Bears. And the Bears will let this run down to the two-minute warning. We will have two minutes to play here in the first half at Soldier Field on the shores of Lake Michigan. Raiders with a one-point lead. We remind you, coming up, the Verizon Halftime Report. JB and the guys back in New York with scores and highlights and a preview of Thursday Night Football on CBS and the NFL Network, all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. First and goal for the Bears. Forte, left side. Penalty marker flies as he's brought down at the four. Curtis Lofton and Malcolm Smith gang tackling. They're going to get Zach Miller with a hold on Alden Smith, it looks like. Holding number 86 offense. 10 yard penalty, still first down. Zach Miller it is. See at the top of your screen there, Zach Miller. Or I'm sorry, Zach Miller's in the in the backfield. He comes out on this outside run and he, he tries to seal the edge on Alden Smith and see he reaches in with that left hand and, and pulls him back. In wrestling, isn't that a two-point takedown or something? <laughs> Definitely bumps him back here. To the 13-yard line. First and goal. I'm not up on my wrestling points, so. <laughs> Cutler to the near side. This is Bent. Bent looking for running room. Runs out of it as he is out of bounds at about the 7. Curtis Lofton pushing him out there. Well, it's 6'6", 273. Bennett catches that ball in the flat. It... They were in a hurry to get over there, but they were in a hurry to push him out of bounds. I don't, I don't know how many people wanted to, to square up on him. That, uh, even though Lofton's coming in at 245 pounds, that's uh, giving up a little bit of weight and a little bit of head of steam. That's about 30, 30 pounds shy of Martellus Bennett. Second and goal from the seven. Butler looking left. Goal line. Pass is complete. Just short of the end zone to Eddie Royal. Ball is going to be placed at about the one-yard line. D.J. Hayden covering on the play. Good zip. You can you wonder about the velocity because of the, the hamstring injury. That's a dangerous pass there. See Eddie Royal reaching See for the end can, zone. He tries to reach for it. Doesn't quite get there. Great mark by the official right on top of it. And Oakland has called a timeout, stopping the clock with a minute 39. He attempts to stick the ball up. You see the official right here. He's right on top of it, and that ball is going to be just inside the goal line. Third and goal. Forte, the deep back. Forte, not going to get there. Actually loses yardage. Raiders going to take a timeout, try and save some. I don't think there's much decision here. I think you have to go for the field goal and take the lead, or, or potentially take the lead going into halftime. Well, Cutler is still on the field. That's what quarterbacks do. You try and get the stare down <laughs> like, hey, we're staying out here. This is what we're going to do. And, you know, this isn't uh, Peyton Manning and Tony Dungy where Peyton would just, like, wave everybody off the field and, and push them back when they were in Indianapolis together. This is uh, this is a big decision here. Ball just outside the one-yard line. They're going for the, and they're they going for the field goal. I was like, this is... In a, in a tight ball game like this, this is this would be tough to turn down the field goal and 
and take the lead here. With the way that your offense is playing, the way that you've owned time of possession, been able to keep the, car, keep the ball out of Derek Carr's hands. So Robbie Gold will get this one away from about 19 yards. So gold out of the hold of Spencer Lanning. Just to remind people, they did have the block on the extra point earlier. And that kick is good. Minute 26 to play in the first half, and the Bears grab a 16 to 14 lead. Chicago Bears took part in Super Bowl 20. Mike Ditka's Bears shuffled all the way to New Orleans where they took on the underdog New England Patriots. The Bears' legendary defense was way too much for the Patriots. And the fridge even chipped in on offense, rushing for a touchdown in the third quarter as the Bears won it in a cakewalk. 46 to 10. Well, on that iconic look of Coach Ditka there with the sweater and the mustache, you just, you, at the beginning of it, we talked about the Ditka dash the run and fundraiser that took place yesterday so but looking forward to this drive now for the Raiders you gotta understand you still have still have Janikowski as your kicker so this is not a, an instance because the really wind hasn't become much of a factor at all today there is a little bit of wind the Raiders are going in the direction of the wind but it's really not much of a factor so with the leg that Janikowski possesses you're really just looking to Man, you could even get it to the 40-yard line, 38-yard line, 40-yard line, and, and try and make a, uh, you know, make a long kick. Sebastian Janikowski has a career long of 63 in Denver. In Denver, this is off grass, outside in the elements, a little bit cold. So as we know, because of uh, the Patriots, we know that the football is different, colder weather. So. And they will not run this one out of the end zone, so they'll begin at their own 20-yard line. Remind you once again, the guy standing by in New York, James Brown and his band of renown for all the latest NFL scores and highlights and a preview of Thursday Night Football on CBS and NFL Network coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. So the Pernell McPhee interception, 14-yard drive for the field goal. And the Bears with a 16-14 lead. When you have to understand the Raiders do still have the one timeout, so they can utilize the middle of the field here. There's plenty of time to keep attacking the middle of the field, try and find those creases, get up, spike the ball, and save that timeout for later on down. Carr. Trying to scramble out of trouble. He can't do it. Back inside the five-yard line, and Eddie Goldman, the rookie out of Florida State, with the sack. Great coverage by the Bears. They're, they're pushing everybody upfield. I'll watch here. I thought this was going to be his outlet, but then he turns and does a wheel route. He comes inside. There was no one for Derek Carr to get rid of the football on a, on a short basis. Everybody's covered underneath, and you want to make a smart decision to not turn the ball over, not throw a haphazard pass somewhere into the middle of the field. There was a, a receiver that opened in the middle, middle of the field late, but knowing that you're down in your own end zone you don't want to take that risk and Latavius Murray with the handoff now Now with three timeouts the Bears are going to start using their timeout and they will stop the clock here with 34 seconds to play and third and 24 Murray, the ball carrier. should they have done that a play ago yeah you're thinking with the three timeouts it would have been uh, after the big sack take the penalty and but now let's see. So with third down, you can utilize the tie timeout after this. Well, then, you know, I guess the other side of it is if you call the timeout and then somehow the Raiders pick up the first down, you help them out by saving a timeout. Now if your offense gets the ball back, you have a timeout in your pocket to use to try and, uh, you know, try and set up a, you know, a long field goal yourself. And we've been talking about the strong left leg of Sebastian Janikowski. We mentioned his career long is 63. He has 48 career field goals of 50 or more yards. That's amazing, and, you know, and on the other side of the ball, Robbie Gold is, uh, I don't know if he has nearly those same types of numbers, but Robbie Gold can can definitely kick it in the 50s as well. He has a 
I believe he has the Bears record for most 50 yard field goals so powerful legs on both sides third and 24 What's up? Murray. Across the 10 to about the 13. And uh, the Raiders will stop, or the Bears will stop the clock with a timeout and 29 seconds to play. Just a reminder, we play every game of the 2015 season on demand with NFL Game Pass. Go to NFL.com slash Game Pass to start your free trial. There's Roddy Gold. Roddy Gold has a long of 51 this season. Robbie Gold is second in NFL history with 75% of field goals 50 or longer. He's made 18 of his 24 kicks 50 or longer. So they're trying to get with that one time out left, trying to get him in a position to give it a shot. See what Mark Mayer already does with the turn. Line drive kick takes a bounce, and Mariani will let it roll. And this will come to rest close to the 35 yard line. So, what does Jay Cutler do here? Well, you still got you still have use of the middle of the field. So if you can get something on the outside, use that, get out of bounds quickly, and then you save your time out for another shot in the middle of the field. But if you if you do go to the middle of the field, you better make sure you get a big chunk, uh, because if you're going to burn up that time out before uh, saving it for the field goal, then you're really limiting yourself after that. I'm not real happy with Mariani if I'm the Bears. I, I think you go up there and you jump up and you take the you take the shot. You're saving time by grabbing the ball. You would have saved about 10 yards and roll, even if you catch it on that first bounce. But we got to get over that as a quarterback and move on to, to this next step. Cutler, and a scramble, and he goes down at the 31. Alden Smith brought him down. And the rest of the first half time will just click away. We come to the end of the first half. Seesaw back and forth. Little advantage to the Raiders, little advantage to the Bears, and it was 16-14. Off the field goal as we come to the end of the first half. And let's go down to Jamie. Coach, it seemed like things started to click offensively for you in the second quarter. What did you like that we'll see continue in the second half? Yeah, I thought we started to move the ball and do some things. Uh, and we'll look to get more of that going in the second half. The run game seemed to open up a little bit for Matt Forte. Matt Forte, how do you clamp down on that in the second? Yeah, make sure we're fitting it right. I think we had a couple busts up front. We'll we'll get that tightened up. We got a big physical front. If we if we're in the right spots, we're pretty tough to move it on. Coach, thanks. Thank you. Jamie, thank you. And we have come to the end of the first half here at Soldier Field in Chicago. 16-14 in favor of the Bears. We'll be back with the Verizon Halftime Report. After this message and a word from your local station, you're watching the NFL on CBS, the home of Super Bowl 50. Back at Soldier Field in Chicago in the first half, you can see exactly why the Oakland Raiders have been so high on the rookie Amari Cooper, he provides a spark. And speaking of a spark, that's what Jay Cutler has provided for the Chicago Bears in his return to the starting lineup today. 16-14, Chicago with the lead over the Oakland Raiders. Let's take a look at the DirecTV Ultimate Picture Cam. Well, it's going to be the interception off Latavius Murray. Pernell McPhee is right there to get the interception. It gets great field position for the Chicago Bears as they move into position to take the lead at halftime. Greg Gumbel, Trent Green back at Soldier Field in Chicago. So as we saw the first half, you know, Matt Forte has more total yards from scrimmage by himself than the Oakland Raiders do. What do we expect? What do we look for in the second half? Well, for the Oakland Raiders, they need to use, get the ball more. They need to maintain possession of the ball more. Only 23 snaps in the first half. So they really haven't kept possession of the ball. They need to keep it away from the Bears and, and get first downs. Their, their score was, their second score was set up by the Bears turnover. And then for the Chicago Bears, it's all about chunk plays. In the first half, they had eight plays of over 10 plus yards. Four of those eight plays were over 20 yards. So continue to get those big chunks here in the second half. 
The Raiders get the football first here in the second half. Marcel Reese is deep. And another short pooch kick. About the 15 yard line. This is Roy Hallou Jr. Out to about the 25. Let's go down to James. Well, Greg, this might be a first. I asked John Fox about how he felt like Jay Cutler's first half went coming back from that hamstring injury. He called his quarterback a tough cookie. Felt was really happy about his performance so far defensively. He felt like the Bears were being a little too patient with these Oakland Raiders. And I just checked in with the Raiders. Michael Crabtree is back out there. He just walked off the field, so I will check in on that uh, ankle injury that he was nursing. All right, Jamie, thank you. Down! The winning! So Latavius Murray in the backfield. Latavius Murray gets the handoff to get things started here in the second half. And out to about the 29-yard line as we look at the first half numbers. Time of possession way off the charts in favor of the Bears. Well, and, that, and that's why they need to get more snaps. They need to keep the ball away from the Bears, but they also need to get the run game going. Latavius Murray only 22 yards rushing at halftime. He's an important piece for these Raiders here in the second half, and we have an injured player, injured bear down on the field. Right off the bat, Antrell Roll, the 11th year safety out of Miami, a former Arizona Cardinal, former New York Giant. See as he comes in on Latavius Murray. Once again, another injury of a teammate or a player rolling into the back of the legs. That time, Roll Got rolled, up on. got rolled up on that right leg. Meanwhile, Crabtree back into the Oakland lineup, and he was rolled up on in the first half. Yeah. So it's a uh, number of injuries happened to players as uh, we, we see Roll is continuing to get help over on the sideline. Number 29, Harold Jones Corte. Has replaced Roll in the secondary for the Bears. Down! Second and seven. We're waiting! What's up? Car throws, Murray out of backfield, lead off the handle of that one. Sam Acho was right there to make you think about it. Well, and that's very uncharacteristic of Latavius Murray. He did have the tip earlier in the game, the one that bounced off his pads that he just showed Pernell McPhee making the interception on, but he's going to have to start catching it with his hands. He tried catching it with his chest again. He tried cradling it, catching with his body again. He needs to reach out and snag it with his hands and keep it away from those shoulder pads. So now it's third and seven. Yeah. Carr. Going down at the 20-yard line. Number 96, Jarvis Jenkins who had two sacks at Seattle last week. And that's important for them to continue to get push. Right here, he's going to get the push on the inside, get the sack. Quickest way to the quarterback is those inside gaps. If you can get inside pressure, there's nowhere for the quarterback to go to. Once again, the Raiders going off the field quickly, three and out. Marquette kicking it to Mark Mariani. Mariani right up the middle of the field. And out to the 45, and we have a penalty marker on the far side. A lot of discussion going on. This one's a major discussion. <laughs> you want them to get it right, but you just want it to be in a little more timely manner. There's no foul on the play. Timeout. <laughs> Thanks for that explanation, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the Bears did in the first half of this game. Touchdown on the first possession. Well, it's a much better half than if you look at the, the 10 possessions they had in last week's game against Seattle where they had to punt all 10 times. Got shut out, only seven first downs. So much more production here today by the Bears offense. Hey, if there's anything that John Fox can look up with, 
Bears come into this game averaging 15.3 points a game in the first three games. They have 16 on the board already. This is Forte. And Forte scrambling as the Bears covering. No, Raiders it goes over. The Raiders have the loose football. Looks like Stacy McGee is the one that comes out of the pile with it. He may have taken it away from Leno. Wants a hit as Forte comes in here. Helmet on the football. And when all is said and done, it's the Raiders with the ball and terrific field position down by two. David Amerson for the Raiders will be the one to come in and put the hit on Matt Forte. You see him coming in from the left. He puts his helmet right on the football as he knocks that ball loose before Forte's knees get to the ground. There's a scramble for it, and you can see down here at the bottom of the pile. For a while there, we thought Leno Jr. But was somewhere in there, Stacy McGee. <laughs> he, was able to, he was able to pull it away. That's right. Second last fumble by the Bears today. Murray. Just inside the 40-yard line. Christian Jones making the tackle. Well, and the Raiders were able to capitalize for a touchdown the last time they got the fumble recovery in Bears territory. So considering that the, the Raiders haven't had many snaps, they can continue to keep getting turnovers to get this field position. It doesn't matter how many snaps you get if you're able to make these types of big plays. Second and three. They fake it to Murray and Carr throwing, and that's incomplete. At the 35-yard line, intended for Seth Roberts, and Sherrick McManus was all over him. These are the Bears' first-half possessions. And you see a lot fewer snaps. Majority of those four of the six possessions are, are three or less plays. So if you're going to get a touchdown, if you're going to get a touchdown on a three snap, you're fine with that. But otherwise, you got to try and use up the clock a little bit better. And you can see that drive start on the Chicago 25. That's what I was talking about after the turnover. So now here's a third and three for Derek Carr. Carr throwing out of the flat. We have a penalty marker thrown as Michael Rivera is hit almost immediately by Adrian Amos. Let's check the flag. Well, they're going to call holding, I believe, on Tracy Porter on Amari Cooper. From where the flag was thrown and the official that threw it, that's generally the case. Into the hands, hands in the face. 21 defense. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. You know, you wonder what's happening on a play like that because Derek Carr didn't even look to this side of the field. Well, what's it doesn't even he doesn't even get his hand near his face. That's the penalty that was called on Cooper. Cooper didn't even touch. It was called on Porter. Porter's hand didn't even get anywhere near Cooper's face mask. It, you, you saw the right hand come up in that chest neck area, but it didn't get up in the uh, in the face. So. John Fox must be pleased with the call. First down, Oakland at the Chicago 35. Pull it over the middle. That's Crabtree. And Crabtree inside the 20 to about the 17. Derek Carr showing off his throwing arm. Well, and Derek Carr recognizing before the snap, he brought Crabtree in on the motion. He knew off the play fake or was anticipating off the play fake that the linebackers would bite. So instead of leaving Crabtree out at a wide split, he moved Crabtree into a tighter alignment, tighter split, so he could get the ball on him quicker. 17-yard pickup, first down. down now at the 17-yard line. What's up? Back to the ground game with Murray. Murray, he drew the run on the right side. Gets about five to the 11. Kyle Fuller coming up from his cornerback position to make the stop. Fuller, the Bears' first-round draft pick last year. Well, it's interesting to see most of the day they've been flopping Porter to cover Cooper to both sides of the field. That must be the matchup that they think gives them a better advantage. 
on second and four. Carr with time, end zone, got his man, touchdown, Seth Roberts. Third touchdown catch of the season for Roberts. Well, and this is automatically going to be reviewed because it was called a touchdown on the field, and it looks like the second foot comes out of bounds. The throw by Carr over the top of McClellan. One, One foot is there. On the field is the receiver. Second foot was out of bounds. It is an incomplete pass. Third down. So now it's not going to be automatically reviewed. Now it's up to the Raiders to determine if they want to challenge this. Similar similar to what Jack Del Rio had to do in the first half with the Amari Cooper. You can see right there, it looks like his foot's on the back line. And Jack Del Rio going to hold on to the challenge flag. Well, that ball was just barely tipped before it got to Roberts. That's a great job of holding on to the ball. Great concentration, cradling that in, bringing it in. So no touchdown, third and four. Carr throwing. Incomplete at the five-yard line. Intended for Michael Rivera. And Kyle Fuller with the hit to disengage the football. That's a good clean hit by Fuller knocking that ball out. Now back to the close touchdown for the Raiders. Roberts down with one foot. The second one just taps just on the back line. His toes right on the right on the line there. Great shot by our crew to get that. You see those toes come down. Whereas on the other angle, what we had with Cooper in the first half, we were able to see his foot inbound as Janikowski tries to... 29-yarder. And the Raiders will regain the lead, 17-16. Just a great look at a great skyline. Here in Chicago, 17-16. Oakland, 10.53 to play in the third. Oakland with 10 points off of two turnovers. And the Bears with three off of the one takeaway. Mariani will not run it out, and Cutler will start from his own 20-yard line. Well, we've called Sam Acho's name a couple of times today for the Chicago Bears. Linebacker has been a frequent visitor to rural villages in Nigeria where he joins family members, medical professionals, and volunteers to give free medical care to people in need. Malnutrition in young children is an enormous problem in Nigeria, and Acho's parents founded Living Hope Ministries, which helps in screening and treating malnutrition along with other medical issues. That's a good guy. You know, you love hearing those kind of stories, and, and, and especially at this time when you know, so much violence is going on around the world. It's just, uh, it's great to see a player like Acho getting back. Whistle before the snap. Fault start, number 62, offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. That's right guard Vladimir Dukas. Who, of course, does not believe that he committed a foul. <laughs> He threw his hands up, and he's still pointing at the board. I just saw on the replay. It didn't even go that way. <laughs> I just saw it. <laughs> oh, you can hear him in the huddle. First and 15. So Cutler will give it to Forte, and Forte will get a couple straight up the middle. Matt Forte, only the third player in NFL history to have more than 1,400 yards from scrimmage in each of his first seven years in the NFL. Only Curtis Martin and Ladanian Tomlinson, the others to do that. Well, he's well on his way to have an eighth year with the uh, with the type of numbers he's putting up this season. So, been an impressive uh, career so far for Matt Forte. Second and 13. And well, he's wrapped up, and yet, with the career he's had, Word on the street is that he might be available as the Bears continue to rebuild and retool this team. Well, if you look at the moves they made this week with trading Jared Allen to Carolina, trading Jonathan Bostic to New England, that uh, only fuels those rumors even more when you start talking about veteran players with, uh, with high salary cap numbers. 
Plus, he has free agency on the horizon. Matt Forte. Third and 13. Butler, quick pass outside, complete. This is Martellus Bennett, and Bennett rolls across the 30 for a first down. Once again, 273 getting ahead of a steam. They don't initially come up and make that hit. As he gets close to those first down sticks, he's going to carry the defenders those last couple yards. That's exactly what he does as he breaks that first down plane. Eight straight completions for Jay Cutler. Meanwhile, Bennett, seven catches today for 55 yards and a touchdown. And to this side, and Eddie Royal couldn't hold on. It'll be second and ten. That's just the case of trying to run before you secure the kids. A lot of drop passes today. There have been, and, and really that's surprising when you consider, you know, there was, there was speculation there was going to be rain today. Uh, that didn't happen or hasn't happened yet. You, you thought it was going to be windier. They're saying 25, 30 mile an hour gusts. It really has been pretty pleasant, um, definitely up here in the booth. But down on the field, you can see the flags. They're not, they're not moving that hard. So uh, considering the number of drops, it is surprising. On second down, Cutler throwing sideline and overthrew Royal. Well, we were just critical of the receivers with drops. We've got to be critical of Jay on that one. That's just a missed throw. He had him open in the flat and just let him too much. That's Taylor Mays limping off to the Oakland locker room. Six-year defensive back out of USC. So the Bears, 7 out of 10 on third down today. Cutler looking at a third and 10. Rift time, over the middle, there's Bennett. Bennett for the first down. Bennett is going to be matched up on Lofton, and this is just a stop route. So you'll see on the left side of your screen here, he just presses up into him, gets to that first down depth, escapes to the outside, and sits in that window. Now you got Leno Jr. on Alden Smith. keeping him away from Jay Cutler. Cutler having just enough time to get it away. On first down. High snap, Cutler handles it, throws to the other side, and that's incomplete. Well, it looked to be set up like this was just gonna be a quick throw to the left, maybe another one of those quick wide receiver type screens. You see the defense flowing that way. Cutler not wanting to make that throw and try sliding to his right. And Hit a little late check down, but if you're a quarterback and you've had a hamstring injury, you want to put it out of your mind, but can you really? You do. You put any of the injuries out of your mind, no matter no matter what you're dealing with. Once they're out there, you just kind of, hey, if I'm out here, I'm out here. I'm playing, and you just you kind of roll with it. But as far as all of a sudden he scrambling, wants to take off and run, that's when you may set, have a second thought about taking off and running down the field. On second down, overthrows. His intended receiver, Bellamy. And that was just plain old off the mark. In fact, the last couple have been off the mark. Yeah, he's had a couple here that he's, uh, he has been in pretty good rhythm. You think about the accuracy that he's thrown, the fact that he, he does have the two touchdown passes. He's, for the most part, the, the, the passes that he's had to Martellus Bennett and a number of other ones. But you're right, Greg, these last couple throws just haven't looked as, uh, as consistent as what he had been thrown. Offensive coordinator Adam Gase looking on. Third and ten. And this sideline pass is incomplete, intended for number 81, Cameron Meredith. And we have a marker down back near the line of scrimmage. Holding 62 offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Second straight penalty against Ducasse, and they'll decline that. Nope. No problem with the velocity and accuracy of this throw. Nico Thorpe is in position to, to knock that away, but, but that's a ball you'd like to see Meredith come up with. And the rookie Amari Cooper is back to return this part for the Raiders. He will get a chance to bring this one back for about the 17. Starter stepping out to about the 25-yard line. 7.55 to play. Third quarter. The Raiders with the ball in a one-point lead. 
Welcome back to Chicago where the Raiders have the lead on the Bears, 17-16. And, Greg, you were so nice last week to welcome me back to my hometown of St. Louis that we thought we'd return the favor. So do you remember where you were in the 60s, Greg? Uh, Woodstock? <laughs> well, I do, and it was De La Salle Institute right here in the Windy City here in Chicago. Look at that. Freshman, sophomore, junior, it's senior frightening. year pictures. It's uh, good to welcome you home. Welcome back to your, to your yeah, hometown. Excuse me one second while I shoot myself. Thank you. It's nice. It's always nice to be back in, in, in one of the great cities in, in the world. Well, you talked about that beautiful skyline. I thought it was appropriate that we should bring it up at that time. Derek Carr throwing to this side of the field, and that is complete to the tight end, Lee Smith. A couple of those pictures were mug shots. <laughs> Very dapper at De La Salle. You, oh! talked, you talked about De La Salle quite a bit, so. School of Mayors. Got some, got some archives. Yes. I, believe, I believe four different mayors of the city of Chicago. Pretty impressive. Joseph Canelli, Richard J. Daly, Michael Belandic, and Richard M. Daly. He knows his Chicago trivia. <laughs> On second and one, this is Murray. And Murray with the first down across the 35 to the 36-yard line. And this is, by the way, a happening town now with what's happening with the Chicago Cubs about to have a one game playoff and the Chicago Blackhawks the defending Stanley Cup champions about to open their season on Wednesday here in Chicago well and the Bears are always exciting so it's uh yes it's a it's a very sports driven town and especially this time of year you're, you're right the Cubs uh, getting back into the playoffs here's Murray for not much this has been a strange feel to this game with the, with the momentum shifting back and forth. You know, it, ha it has been. And, and coming into this game, we knew there were injuries on both teams, and, and then we've had more injuries throughout this game on both teams, so that's changed up the flow of the game. Uh, and then the score and the way the teams have been moving the ball, the Bears moving the ball, the Raiders haven't been doing much, but then they get turnovers, get big plays up the field to Cooper. Uh, it's been good to see Cutler back, coming back off of injuries, so the Bears have a little pep in their step from an offensive Murray! standpoint, but it has been a, kind of a broken game from we have had three lead changes today, and that's Murray being corralled by Pernell McPhee. Prior to the game, a couple of members of the defending champion Blackhawks parading the Stanley Cup out onto the field. And this is Andrew Shaw. Watch his shoe. <laughs> Never a good thing when the shoe goes further than the ball. Well, and, and yes, we did. We heard we heard from the reporters that, that were down there that uh, the shoe made it through. The football did not. The football was wide left. The shoe went through. Third and seven. Carr flipping to Halu out of the backfield. And he gets the first down across the 45 to about the 48-yard line. So Derek Carr keeps possession keeps the ball rolling well and just converting third downs they really hadn't converted third downs throughout this day and now this series they've, they've been able to convert a couple of third downs so just keeping this this momentum keeping this drive going getting a flow and a, and a rhythm to the offense so halu to the sideline murray back onto the field from the 48 yard line now oakland with the ball in a one-point lead and this is latavius murray Murray, a third year back out of Central Florida. Well, it's a good size to him, 6'3 and 230. Well, it's almost like the Raiders have decided on this series that, hey, we're going to really try and pound the football in between the tackles. Coming into this game, the Bears are 28th ranked defense against the run in the National Football League. And the Raiders have been trying to mix it up, getting some pass in there. But if you look at how this drive started and how it's been continuing here, they've, they've been going with Murray in between the tackles, pounding inside, and then no! getting to the outside to pick up the third down. No the at offensive coordinator, Bill Musgrave. This is second and seven. And they'll pound it on the ground again. And this time, Murray goes nowhere. Wrapped up by several of the Bears.
the it makes it makes it difficult as a quarterback. Sorry, Greg. It makes it difficult as a quarterback when you do go the run, run, then third down. It becomes so critical on third down with your your accuracy and your decision making. If you, you don't, you don't have much room for error. And as you're getting across midfield here, and they go to an empty set, it sure looks like they'll pass again here on third down. Yeah, another critical third down for Derek Carr. I go through the line. Crabtree on Fuller down here at the bottom of the screen. Gonna look this way and throws, and that's off the mark. Crabtree, the intended receiver, but it wasn't even close to him. Well, Derek Carr had what he wanted. It was it was where he was going with the football. He had the one on one. It was just a miscommunication or or an errant throw. He's thinking. Crabtree is only going to go a yard or so past the sticks, and, and Crabtree, it looks like, goes three yards past the sticks, so hard to decipher who's at fault there. So Marquette King will kick it away to Mark Mariani. Barely got it away. Fair catch called for and made at the 10-yard line as Mariani goes out of bounds. 3-0-2 to play in the third. Welcome back to Soldier Field in Chicago. 3.02 to play in the third quarter in the Oakland Raiders with a one-point lead. 17-16, the Bears start from their own 10-yard line. And Cutler goes to work under center with Matt Forte, the deep back behind him. And Zach Miller is there too. Hit as he reached the line of scrimmage by Justin Ellis. Going back to the first quarter where the Bears lost Will Montgomery. Starting center Will Montgomery. Matt Slauson moves over from guard to center. They've had some problems with the snap. One shotgun that Cutler was able to reel in. That time they're losing the ball to the Raiders. This time just causing a, a mess up in the flow of the play. That's a quick throw to the out time, outside. Slauson, you can see first career game playing center after Montgomery getting hurt in that first series. And second and nine. Cutler throws, sideline. That's complete to Forte out of the backfield. And Forte with a first down. Out to the 20-yard line. I said it earlier in the game. He is a workhorse. It's, it's tremendous. What, his ability coming out of the backfield and the fact that he's in his eighth year, you think there'd be some wear and tear, but I just you see the explosiveness in his first step. You see the explosiveness when he gets the ball in his hands. It's He's put together a tremendous career. You see the numbers on the day over right at 130 yards of, of total yeah. offense. And that's with 21 touches. This is Forte again. Out to the number, out to the 24. And a reminder for you, next Sunday, the NFL on CBS brings you doubleheader action. First, the Rams take on the Packers. And the Bills battle the Titans. Then in game two, Patriots and the Cowboys. Trent and I will be out in Oakland where the Raiders will host Denver. It all starts with the team that takes you all the way to Super Bowl 50, JB and the guys on the NFL today. Second and five. And they'll keep it on the ground with Forte, who moves out to about the 27-yard line. Speaking of JB and the guys, James Brown and Bart Scott in New York. Mr. Bradford uncorking in the second half, Greg. He finds Sam Bradford side, finds Monmouth University's own Miles Austin for the 39-yard touchdown catch. Philadelphia regains the lead 2016. Love those photos of Greg in the past. Back to Greg Gumbel. <laughs> yeah, they didn't get my parole officer in there. <laughs> Thank you, James. <laughs> Third and three. Third and three for Cutler. Cutler with time, throwing. And we get a penalty marker thrown after the play. Yeah, they're going to get Nico Thorpe there. The ball was one of those back shoulder type of throws that Cutler was trying to make. And Thorpe. Mar Marquise Wilson, the intended receiver. Yeah, and, and Thorpe just grabbed Wilson's shoulder. Interference, defense, number 31. Ball replaced in the spot of the foul. Watch Thorpe's left arm. They're over here on the side. See that left arm just pulls and twists him. You're not ever going to be able to reach back into the body of a player and 
get away with that. Cutler throwing in a hurry on the far side, and that's Bennett. And Bennett inside the Oakland 45 to the 43. And we'll see if the Bears get another snap off before the third quarter expires. Cutler has them at the line. all game yeah. using up the play clock and Cutler couldn't draw them off 17 16 Raiders back after this message and a word from your local station from the city of Chicago our producer Bob Monsbach our director Suzanne Smith Greg Gumble Trent Green Jamie Erdahl and the rest of our CBS sports crew we start the fourth quarter The Bears with a huge advantage in total yards. Oakland with a one-point lead on the scoreboard. Second and four. And Cutler sidearms that one and hits Marquise Wilson. And Wilson fights his way close to the 30-yard line. And we have another Raider in pain on the ground. That's middle linebacker Curtis Lofton. We got a couple of them down. We'll take a time out. Sweet home, Chicago. Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Hot and hate, baby, don't you want to go? 14.49 to play in Sweet Home, Chicago. That's Danico Autry being taken to the locker room. What happened on that last play, a couple of Raiders collided in pursuit of Marquise Wilson. On first down. From the 32, Cutler. And that is to Eddie Royal. And we get a late flag thrown. You saw Danico Autry yeah. and, and Lofton, Curtis Lofton running into each other. That's what caused the injury. This flag came after the play. I wonder if it was a little trash talking. After the play is over, delay of game. Offense, number 19, spiking the ball. The five-yard penalty, it's second down. So that backs the Bears up to their to the Oakland 40-yard line. Here's the, the reason why it was called. That's that's a spike. I don't know. That's uh, consider that's a, that's the second call we've seen today. That is, they got Tracy Porter earlier in the game on a hand to the face of Amari Cooper. That we showed the replay and he was nowhere near his face. So this is the second time today. So. Here's a pass to the near side of the field, and there's Mr. Bennett again. Boy, has he done some damage for the Bears today. Run out of bounds by Malcolm Smith. We are told that Eddie Royal may have gotten that penalty for rolling the ball in the direction of the official. But that's not a delay of game. That would be on sportsman like conduct. Yeah. That would... Third and 14. Cutler needs the 22 yard line for a first down. He'll give it to Forte. Forte can't shake the tackler in the backfield. Terrific play by Alden Smith to bring Forte down. Well, and my guess on that is. They already had it predetermined. If we're going to hand the ball off here, we know we're going to try this field goal attempt. John Fox wanted them to be conservative. Hoping to get a bigger chunk than what they got, but we're out of goal with a 54-yard attempt. 
out of the hold of Spencer Lanning. If this misses, it's a pretty good field position for the Raiders. Kick on its way. And is good. Robbie Gold now three for three from 50 or more yards this season. Well, I can't believe how, how far he made it by. You know, you saw, you could see the angle we showed on the on the live kick that the uh, the flags were starting to blow a little bit. A little bit in his face, a little bit right to left. And Fifty-four yard drive, Robbie Gold's fifty-four yard field goal, and let's go down to Jamie. Greg, we saw Danico Autry walk into the Raiders locker room. Following behind him was the unaffiliated neurotrauma consultant, so he will be in there for some time undergoing the concussion assessment. All right, Jamie, thank you. Fourth lead change of the day as the Bears on top 19-17 with 13 minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Bears looking for their first win of the season. Marcel Reese will not run this one out of the end zone. So Derek Carr and the offense out to the 20-yard line tonight on 60 Minutes. They look like they're from the future, but they're riding on our roads right now. Driverless cars on 60 Minutes tonight. Only CBS. Well, the Bears, it looked unusual to have them see them kick off. You know, all their, their, think about their kickoffs so far today. have all been the poots kicks this short. You know, they've given up a 108-yarder. They've given up a 105-yarder. Hadn't done a very good job on kickoff coverage, but that time there, Robbie Gold puts it to the back of the end zone. The Raiders don't have a choice but to go. What's up? They're starting with Latavius Murray, and Murray buried at about the 22-yard line. Shea McClellan leading the charge. Just thinking ahead here now, so you got 12 minutes to go in the fourth. The Raiders still only 41 plays at this point in time, only 146 yards of offense. I understand they're trying to run the football. The Bears aren't very good at stopping the run. Well, the Bears have been very good at stopping the run today. Only 49 yards rushing for the Raiders. They're going to have to start airing this out a little bit if they want to come back and get in this lead. Car. Disconnect with Amari Cooper. You touched on it a little earlier about how all the extra time that Derek Carr and Amari Cooper have put in. And <laughs> Derek told us at one point he called Amari Cooper and asked him if he wanted to put in a little extra time at some point. And he said, sure. And then he said, he got a text back from him. He said, I'm here. He said, where? He said, I'm at your house. I'm at your door, right. <laughs> Let's go throw. Third and eight. Deep drop for Carr with time. Out of the backfield is Marcel Reese, and Reese across the 30 and out of bounds for a first down. And that's a tough catch for a big man to make. You'll see Reese coming out, trying to get a chip there as he releases out to the right flat. Extends his arms, makes the catch, and, and able to pick up the first down before Porter can knock him out. Much needed first down for these, for these Oakland Raiders. The Chicago Bears say safety Antrell Roll will not return with an ankle injury today. Reese remains in the game. Reese gets the handoff. No, excuse me, Jamie's on the wallet. Third year back out of North Texas. This hasn't been much for the running game for the Raiders today, and I know you have to try and stick with it a little bit, but not having much success with it. came into the game with the 17th ranked rushing attack in the league. You got Crabtree in the slot here, you got Cooper on the outside. We talked about the two young weapons that, uh, that Carr has to, to utilize. Carr throwing, coming across the field, complete to Crabtree at about the 45-yard line, and that'll be enough for another Oakland first down. I'm sure... Uh, 
Michael Crabb through a catch win, seventh year pro being called the young, young receivers that uh, Derek Carr has to work with. But on that one, he looked like a young receiver you'll working get, the slot. You'll get a thank you card. Yeah, that's right, get a thank you card. Just setting up on the outside. That's that's what Amari Cooper on the outside does. It takes the safety away. You can't just let him run free down the field. You have to drift back and give your corner some help, which allows the underneath route, the out route there by Crabtree and, and pick up another first down for the Raiders. Raiders have now moved to their own 45. Carr, kick pass, Reese, Reese. For about five, maybe six, to the Chicago 49. Sam Acho, Kyle Fuller putting the stops on him there. It'll be second and four. No yardage receiving here in the second half yet for number 89. Well, now that you cross midfield, you start thinking about taking shots to the end zone as you get closer and closer. We we'll have to keep our eye on Cooper as we know that they're taking those shots. Pitch for Murray, who dropped it. And the Bears have the football. Sam Acho with the recovery. Well, so far today, this is one that Latavius Murray wants to forget about. What a nightmare of an afternoon for him. Earlier, the ball off his shoulder pads in the interception. This time, just a sweep. Hits him right in the hands. Perfect pitch, perfect toss. Doesn't have to reach back for it. You just see he takes his eyes off the football and looks up to where the defense is and where he's going to have to make his cut by taking the eyes off the football. It allows it to sit there and... There's Acho jumping on top of it. Turnovers are even at two apiece. Forte to the 40. Alden Smith with the tackle. And we duck under nine and a half minutes to play here in the fourth. Well, and it's important to remember, Greg, Going in this same direction, Robbie Gold just hit a field goal. You get another five yards. This is this is the field goal range that Robbie Gold just hit. So this is important that they were able to get the football in this location. And Raiders can't give up anything. Not, not just give up a first down. They can't give up yardage. Cutler to throw on second and eight. Under pressure. Going to go deep down the middle of the field. Almost picked off by number 29, David Amerson. And with that, we take you back to New York for another NFL Today update. JB and Bart Scott. Number one headache for coaches is turnovers. Frank Gore is going in for the go-ahead score. He's going to fumble into the end zone, giving Jacksonville the touchback. Still tied at, all, at 13 on his second fumble of the season in the red zone. Greg, Trent, and Jamie. We know all about those turnovers here, guys. Third and eight for Cutler. Yeah. Cutler on the move, throws over the middle. Eddie Royal has got it. Does he have enough for the first down? Right at the first down marker. That was some of the concern coming into this game, not only Jay Cutler's hamstring, but how was it going to stay throughout the course of the game? Would it get cold on the sideline as the temperatures have, have dropped throughout this game? That time there with the burst sliding over to the right to avoid the rush and, and hit Royal working from right to left. And we are going to have a rare measurement. This may be our first of the day. I think it is. You measured up that sandwich pretty good at <laughs> halftime. <laughs> there it is for the Bears. You hear the reaction of the crowd. Watch how he's able to avoid that initial rush. And completing the pass that they all say the quarterback shouldn't throw, throwing across your body. <laughs> throwing right to left, <laughs> throwing across your body, and... He got it. He has the arm strength to do it. It's just uh, it's a risky throw. Cutler's comeback day, 22 of 33 for 231 and two touchdowns. 
and no interceptions. And first down, and it's a Forte again. And Raiders pretty much waiting for number 22. Dan Williams along with Alden Smith making the stops. Well, this has been the game plan for the Bears the entire day. Just use up the clock. They're, they, they, they've been using up this 40-second clock, the play clock, most of the day. They're just taking tempo and, and keep that clock winding. That's why it's uh, it's been, well, it's been lopsided from a yardage standpoint as the Bears are sitting at about 150 more yards than what the Raiders have. But time of possession is, is nearly 10 minutes more for the Bears. Watch Bennett over here. Bennett's right here in this in this bunch formation. See if they don't get him the ball quickly and let him. They've been doing that a few times with him. Whoa! Look the other way and complete it to Marquise Wilson. Good hands by Wilson. Well, they had the Raiders thinking the same thing because they had several defenders over on that side of the field thinking they're going to make that quick throw once again to to Bennett and, and having the one-on-one -on, -one on the outside against Thorpe and there's that arm strength once again by Jay Cutler zipping it to the boundary. Third and one. And we go under seven minutes to play here in the fourth. Cutler going to throw it over the middle, intercepted, picked off by Charles Woodson. His second of the season, number 62 of his great career. And we have a penalty marker down. They got a flag on the far sideline. It's going to be on the Raiders' sideline. The official ran into someone over there and... I think the Raiders maintain possession of the ball, but they will get the, uh, I believe one of the officials was knocked down on the far sideline. But going back to the play, though, Cutler just got, a, he got, they had the opportunity to push the ball up the field. He didn't really get much into the throw because we were throwing it off his back foot. Raiders did a good job of jumping the flat, taking away the short route, but he had the deep route behind it. He just didn't get a lot on it because he didn't have his feet underneath him the way you normally want to throw that. After the interception and during the return, unsportsmanlike conduct. Oakland, the return team, the official ran into the players and coaches in the bench area. That half the distance of the penalty will be assessed for the dead ball spot. First down, Oakland. Here's a replay of the interception. You see Cutler does not get his legs into it, which doesn't allow any zip, and Woodson undercuts for the interception. There's a really good place here in Chicago for pizza called Uno. Derek Carr pulls it down, takes another look, under pressure. And on the sideline, is that complete? Incomplete. Intended for Amari Cooper. Shea McClellan was covering on the play. Let's go the interception one more time. Charles Woodson undercutting. The play here is to get the receiver in the flat. And, that, and that's ultimately where Jay Cutler is trying to get the ball quickly because that's going to pick up the first down. But the second part of this, as you see two Raiders jump it, the second part is Bennett running the corner route up above. Because Cutler has to move with his feet, he doesn't get his legs into it, which makes the ball float, which gives Woodson the interception. On second and ten, Carr. Carr with the throw across the 30-yard line to Crabtree. I can guarantee McManus, his eyes are like saucers. Sherrick McManus for the Bears as he's coming up to make this interception. But then Crabtree crosses his face and plucks it right out of the air. Tremendous play by Crabtree. First down. Oh, thank you. At the 34. Now! We're waiting! What's up? 
Carr. Throwing it. And that's another one to Crabtree. Crabtree across the 45 at about the 47-yard line and another first down. Jay Cutler looking on at this play. Just throwing the interception on third down. You see Adam Gase right there. A lot of Bear fans may be thinking, what were they doing throwing on third and one when they're already in field goal range? Well, that's a good play when you look at the way the play developed. You're trying to catch the defense off. You know they think they're going to run the ball, so you try getting a quick flat out. They double teamed the flat, had the tight end wide open, and Cutler just didn't get enough on it as Woodson undercut. This is Halu. And Halu. To about the 41. Under five minutes to play, and Sebastian Janikowski loosening up again. You go back to that interception again, Greg. It was I, I, we ran that play all the time. You know, I had Gonzalez as a tight end. Obviously, Cutler has Bennett as a tight end. It's uh, you know, you try and sneak sneak something in there and pick up an easy first down, and you know, the play was there to be made, and now the Raiders are getting themselves in position where Janikowski's not far from trying to field goal. Car throwing incomplete. It'll be second down. A reminder, coming up, the Subway postgame show. JB and the guys, including Mr. Gonzalez, <laughs> for all the latest NFL scores and highlights coming up on the Subway postgame show. Well, what a... Another interception by Charles Woodson. About 30 seconds after he becomes eligible, he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> he definitely is. Great player. I played against him many times. I have a great deal of respect for him. And obviously a, a, a real warrior at that position in the secondary, playing as many years, 18 years now, on the defensive side of the ball. Second and 10. Carr throwing. That's complete. And that's Michael Rivera, the tight end. going to be third down here but they've already moved themselves now into Janikowski field goal range with that reception You're pretty much in Janikowski field goal range once you cross <laughs> midfield, you cross right? midfield it could be yeah it definitely could be but in his 16th year out of Florida State I wouldn't be surprised now the Bears did the play action on third and short don't, don't be surprised if the Raiders don't do play action on third and short as well they haven't had much production running the football in the backfield they're going to give it to him to about the 30. that's one of those where bill musgrave is like well i just saw what happened with the bears i'm going to be conservative with it hand it off and know i got janikowski to try and split the uprights plus the other thing is you use it by getting the first down you're using up the clock you're, you're taking time away from the bears if if the Raiders are able to get some points on the board, you're taking time away from the Bears and what they'll have potentially to go down and, and try and take the lead back. Each team with all three of their timeouts remaining here in the second half. Halu in the backfield, Halu with the handoff. Looks like he'll get about four to the 26. And we come up on three and a half to play. That time the Raiders had three tight ends in the game, only one receiver, that's Amari Cooper. The Bears stacked everybody to the inside. They had nine guys near the line of scrimmage, had a safety in the middle, and then one-on-one -on -one Porter on the outside with Amari Cooper. Looks like they have the same personnel group. Be interesting if they don't take a shot here with Cooper one-on-one -on -one against Tracy Porter. This is now a 65-yard drive by the Raiders. Inside the 25 to about the 22 or the 23 yard line. Had a missed extra point earlier in the game. After the Bears' first score, you can see this ball looks like it's going to be wide left and in this block. We have a timeout on the field. 2.50 to play. Two point Chicago lead. 250 to play in regulation. The Bears with a two-point lead. Oakland with the ball and three timeouts remaining at the Chicago 22. Third and two. Oh, no! 
Kalu, who has been in the backfield since Latavius Murray lost the football. He'll get it. Can't get away. In fact, he lost a yard. Cornell McPhee. And here comes Sebastian Janikowski. Well, McPhee has having another big day for the Bears last week, coming up with the two sacks against Seattle. This time, cutting through that inside gap, able to get in the backfield and get Halu actually tackled for loss, pushing Janikowski back even further. 41-yard field goal attempt for the veteran. He was good from 29 earlier. This for the lead. On its way. And good. Well, I would say the win the winds picked up, Greg. Did you see that ball curve as it was uh, heading towards the uprights? Sebastian Janikowski. As reliable as they come. Oakland with a one-point lead. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by McDonald's, teaming up with the NFL like never before. And by Verizon. Watch live primetime games with NFL Mobile, only on Verizon. Two oh five to play in regulation. 20 to 19, Oakland coming up. The Subway Post Game Show with JB and the guys back in New York with all the latest NFL scores and highlights all coming up on the Subway post-game show. So Derek Carr did his job driving the Oakland offense to within field goal range, and Jay Cutler do the same. Well, and really the one-point difference go all the way back to the first quarter and the first touchdown that the Bears put up. Missing that extra point is the only difference in this game now, and Jay Cutler is going to come out and have a, have a couple timeouts in his pocket to use. Line drive kick, and Mariani will not return it. So we will start at the 20-yard line. Let's go down to Jamie. Well, Greg, the wind has indeed picked up down on the field as the game has gone on. I would say primarily it has been working for the Bears, but on this drive, of course, now the wind has shifted, and it is working left, right to left on your screen, which is against the grain for the Bears. All right, Jamie, thank you. You pointed out earlier the length of the kick that Robbie Gold made and he had plenty to spare. He did. That was a 54-yarder that he made with, with plenty of distance. So really the target should almost be to get to the far 40 if, if indeed you're going to go for a field goal. But you do have a new holder, new punter in, in Spencer Lanning. And so there, you know, there's always possibilities that go on when dealing with that process. Forte. Shakes the tackle, dodges another, and out across the 25. Two-minute warning, two to play here in rig. See a couple of denizens from the black hole of travel to Chicago. We'll be out there next week as the Raiders host the Denver Broncos. Two minutes to play. Oakland with three timeouts, Chicago with two. Second and four for Cutler and the Bears. That shift right there was nothing but just an indicator for Jay Cutler what coverage they're going to be in when you move the Forte from outside the end. Cutler. Got hit from behind as he pulled up at the 25 by Khalil Mack. Well, this is what you ultimately have to determine if you're the Raiders. Do you decide to put pressure? Or do you sit back in, in coverage and try and rally and make the tackle? There's still plenty of time, minute and a half left, and, and two timeouts that Chicago had. Cutler throwing and under throws intended for number 11, Josh Bellamy. And on fourth and five, they're going to have to go for it. Yeah, no choice here. They've, they've got to come up with a, with a play that they think is best going to. You want to push the depth of the field. You want to, you know, make the Raiders be honest that you're, you're not going to go over the top, but you also have the windows to where you can pick up the first down. 
on the play that Cutler was sacked. He was looking for Forte out of the backfield and didn't have it. Throwing far side of the field, it is caught by Bennett. Terrific throw, terrific catch for the first down. Well, and the clock is running here, so even though this is a great catch, great first down, everybody feels good about it. You're just using up valuable time as Bennett comes up with a tough catch. Now on first down, Cutler throwing that way again and off the hands of Marquise Wilson. Second and 10 and 105 to play. And Greg, you've mentioned that throughout the course of this game, a number of drops on both sides. This time Marquise Wilson, as you mentioned, trying to catch the ball, trying to get up field, get the first down, get out of bounds, all those things going on. But the number one thing is you have to secure that catch. Marquise Wilson's in the starting lineup, replacing Alshon Jeffrey, who's missing this game. In fact, he's missed the last two weeks with a hamstring. That's Forte. And Forte out of bounds at the 40. In a minute on the clock. I understand why they're trying to get these outgoing routes. All these routes, that, think about it, all the routes that he's attempted and gone for have been out routes. You have two timeouts. You have a minute of time. Angle outside, cut inside. There's a big space in the middle of the field because the defense is playing this outside shell to keep you from outside. Third and four. Butler pulls it down, throws again, and it's complete to the 45-yard line. That one held on to by Wilson for the first down. Well, and I can't I can't believe that the Raiders are continuing to letting him work the boundary here. Ball secure, both feet down. So 56 this, seconds to play. Well, and this is obviously it's helping the Bears saving the, saving those timeouts if you can get out of bounds. But don't forget that middle. There's there's big lanes in the middle of the field. On first down. Butler with time. Gonna go deep. Incomplete. Intended for Cameron Meredith, covered by Nico Thorpe. The well, fans want a flag, but it looked like Thorpe just lost his footing. It did. He, he, he tried accelerating, getting up there. He maybe clicked heels with, with Thorpe. That was incidental. That's not. He didn't reach out and grab his foot. His, his knee came up and, and hit the knee of Thorpe, so that's what caused the, the trip. Interesting, that time there, Cutler decided to take the shot up the field because rotation of safety. Woodson dropped down. It wasn't in a, in a deep safety. He dropped down in the middle of the field, which all of a sudden shifts to the, the middle of the field close, which you know you have one-on-ones on the outside. So Cutler recognizing that and taking the shot. Woodson, the deep man in the secondary now. Cutler stepping up, throwing over the middle. Diving catch made inside the 45 by Eddie Royal. Chicago calls the timeout. John Fox ran out on the field to make the timeout. Again, that's a dangerous throw. Jay Cutler didn't have his feet underneath him. He's trying to throw back across his body, back across the field. Really didn't get much into that, and Woodson was close to coming up and knocking it down. You can do that when you trust your arm. <laughs> Sometimes you can trust it too much, but that time he got away with it. And It'll be Woodson here that's going to come up and try and make the play on Royal. Royals be sitting right in this window, right by the first down. Cutler, he drifts to his left, but then he turns and throws with his weight going the other way. You see Woodson comes up on that and just reading it. And we are told that this is being looked at. Clearly a catch. Yeah, and you think that should stand. Yeah, there, there was, it wasn't even close to the ground. Both his arms were underneath it. 40 seconds to play. First down, there. At the Oakland 43. Cutler throwing this way. Leaping for the ball. And they say the catch was made by Wilson on the near sideline. Well, if this indeed stands... Marquise Wilson making up for that drop he just had. He finishes it. What See if grab. that ball moves when he goes to the ground. He has it there, but watch when he he hits and he rolls. See if that ball moves at all. Talk about finishing the process of the catch. There he secures it. One, two. Well, let's see if we can get all the way to the end. See if it comes loose. Nope, he keeps it against his chest. What a grab. Second and one. Forte. For a first down. This would be about a 50-yard field goal right now for Robbie Gold. 
As you mentioned earlier, Greg, he's three for three on 50-plus yard kicks on the season. And they are going to let the clock wind down here. Ten seconds to play. And timeout is called. Earlier here in the fourth quarter, this is Robbie Gold. With lots of leg. He's 19 of 25 on his career, 50 plus yard field goals. Line of scrimmage is the 31. So this will be close to a 50 yarder. Let's see where they they're going to place it. Spencer Lanning, the newly signed punter, is the holder. And they will set this one down 49 yards away. Robbie Gold for the lead. The sixth lead change of the day comes with two seconds on the clock. What a tremendous kick in these conditions. Jamie just got through reporting that the wind had picked up down on the field. and Excellent snap and hold. As you also mentioned, Greg, Spencer Landing, the newly signed punter, doing the holding. <laughs> John Fox taking a look at what very possibly is win number one on the year. See from this angle just how far it clears. <laughs> that that would have gone in the 60s, I think. Six lead changes on the day. Jake Cutler did exactly what Derek Carr did, brought his team back to within field goal range to grab the lead. How about Cutler coming back off that interception? First of all, coming back off his injury and playing today and, and playing very well today. But he throws that interception, that the lazy ball out to the, the corner. Woodson undercuts it. Derek Carr leads the, leads the Raiders down the field, get the field goal in the lead. Jay Cutler comes out and puts together an accurate drive, moves him down the field, and Robbie Gold comes through once again. Bears looking to snap an eight-game losing streak, which dates back to last year. The squib kick picked up by Halou. Halou on the move. Up the sideline. Throws it back. The ball is loose. Penalty markers fly. Another penalty marker flies. And the lateral game continues. That one thrown back at about the 40, 45. The Raiders are losing yardage on this. Finally covered by the Bears, Sam Acho. Jack Del Rio probably saying, well, we didn't practice that one that way. Kind of a fitting way for this game to end, though, Greg. Really a forward pass. Two good friends. By the receiving team. Meeting in midfield. I clearly has declined at the end of the game. There was an illegal forward pass in that mess. 
and the penalty is declined. And the Bears grab their first win of this season. Well, it was a pretty dominant performance. 371 yards, they controlled the clock. Time of possession was heavily in the Bears' favors. Roy Hulu got this off to a pretty good start. Stanford and Cal lives on forever. <laughs> Everybody thinks they can relive it, <laughs> make it happen. Cue the band. That's Ray Ray Armstrong. Mercifully, the lateral lane stopped, and the Bears a winner. They are now one and three on the year, while the Raiders fall to two and two. And the return of Jake Cutler is a pretty good success. Good day for Jay. 28 of 43, two, 281, two touchdowns. Did have that one interception, but came back and was able to lead him down the field and get him in position where Robbie Gold came through for the. The clutch win. Lots of promise on both sides of the field. There Showing were. Today. Yeah, it was, it, like I said, that was a fitting way for this game to end just because just because of all the craziness we had throughout the day. A lot of injuries on both sides came into the game with a lot of injuries, continue to have injuries throughout the day. And then uh, just from a production standpoint, turnovers, uh, guys making play. We had a number of drops throughout the day, but also when you needed it most, you know, Marquise Wilson coming up with that catch. Huge catch for the Bears down the stretch. Yeah. Our final score, the Bears 22 and the Raiders 20. Up next, the Subway postgame show for Trent Green, Jamie Erdahl, our entire crew, Greg Gumbel, so long from Chicago. This is the NFL on CBS, the Subway postgame show right after this.